All right, we're now gonna discover GIMP's interface so you know where everything is located, how to customize the interface so it looks more like Photoshop, like rearranging the panels, increasing the icon size of your tools, and more. So if you're ready to get started, let's do it. All right, let's start off by opening up a file by going up to File and selecting Open. And you're going to navigate to the Section 1 folder and open up any image. Doesn't really matter because we're only going to be using this for demonstration purposes. Actually, let's open up O2XCF since it has an extra layer in it. And once you install GIMP for the very first time, you may have had this set up here where there's three individual panels. If so, you can combine them all by going up to Windows and selecting Single Window Mode. All right, let's go ahead and get this image back in the center here. And it doesn't look like it's going to fit. So to get that to fit inside of there, we're going to go up to View and select Zoom and then Fit Image in Window. All right, now that it looks more like Photoshop, let's go ahead and customize the interface some more. One of the things you may want to do is resize the left and the right panel by making them wider or thinner. So if you take a look right here, we have three little dots. And once you get your mouse cursor over there, you're going to get this little icon right here. And once you see that, you can then click and drag it to the left or to the right. And you can do the same thing for the right side as well. The other thing you may want to do is rearrange these individual tabs here that have some information about different tools and features and you may not want to have all of them either so you can actually hide them so let's go ahead and hide some of these up here these are all the default ones so i'm going to go ahead and click right here on this little arrow and click on close tab to well close it out the other thing you can do is you can click and drag this out and create a free floating panel. It doesn't look like it's working in the Mac version right now. So let me show you the Windows version here and show you how that looks. So I'm gonna click here, drag it out, and now I have a free floating window. Now, I just wanna mention real quick that this class is being recorded on the Mac version, but it doesn't matter because GIMP is the same on Windows, Mac, and the Linux system. The only real difference is the font in each operating system because the default operating system font is different for Windows compared to Mac. So that's why it looks a little bit different visually. It's because of that font. Other than that, it's exactly the same. All right, so the other thing you can do is you can take this tab and pull it down here in with these other paths as well. So you're just gonna click and drag it down. All right, now we have all four tabs here in the same panel and it got rid of that bottom because there was nothing else there. But if you still want to have that split for whatever reason, just click a tab, drag it to the bottom and you're gonna notice a little bit of a line at the bottom there. Actually, it's pretty thick. That blue line right there, once you release, it's then going to separate those into two different parts. Now, you can also take a tab from over here and bring it over to the right panel by clicking and dragging, and you're going to notice a outline. Once you see that outline, you wanna make sure all of it is selected there. You can then release and it will be added inside. You can also rearrange the tabs by order. So if you want to move the brushes to the end, you can click here and drag it to the right and it will move it into that new position. I'm going to go ahead and close some of these tabs because I don't need all of these right now. I'll go ahead and close the channels and I'm going to close out the path. Now, if you close a panel or a tab by mistake, you can actually add them back by going up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and then choosing the tool or the information that you need. So if you want your histogram, you can add that in there. And I don't need that, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. So go ahead and add any tabs you think you're going to need. Most of the time, I'm just using the layers and the tool options, that's pretty much it. And undo history once in a while. But I like to use my keyboard shortcuts to undo anyway, so I really don't have any use for that. Now, the other thing that I like to do is I like to increase the tool icons and increase the size of my layer thumbnail previews here. So let me show you how to do that. For Mac users, you're gonna go up to GIMP and select preferences from here. And if you're on Windows, it's going to be under edit 
down here at the bottom. All right, so there's one main difference between Mac and Windows. That's it, I promise. All right, so once you're in preferences here, let me go ahead and go back. You will navigate to interface. I'm going to expand that and look for icon theme. Now up here in the icon theme, you can change, well, the theme of GIMP. My personal preference is symbolic. So you can go through these and choose the one that you like. And to increase the icon size, you're going to choose it from down here. Because I'm blind, I like to use the largest available, which is huge. Once you click OK, you're all set. And you'll notice that the tabs also increased in size as well. So that makes it easier to see and read what that tab is all about. Now, for increasing the layer thumbnail preview in the layers panel here, you're going to click right here down to preview size, and then you have all your options right here. So medium is the default. I'm not quite sure what tiny is for. I'm not sure if anybody can actually read that. But again, because I am blind, I like to go with gigantic. All right, much improved if you ask me. All right. Now down here at the bottom of the layers panel, you have some functions that will allow you to rearrange the layers, move them, duplicate, add layer masks, delete them. And we'll go over these later on in the class as we work on some different projects. You'll begin learning what all of these are for. Now let's take a look at the tool options over here because again, you're probably going to be using this one the majority of the time in conjunction with your layers. So the tool options are going to list all the options available for the tool that you have selected. So every time you select a new tool, it will update with the different options available for that tool. Some tools will have more options than others. And we'll go over some of these tool options as we work on the tools later on in the class as you progress through it. Now down here at the bottom, we have some additional information that you can use to customize the interface. The main one is this one right here, the pixels or the dimensions that you want to set. By default, it's pixels, but if you want inches or millimeters, you can choose those different measurements from here. And then this is showing the current zoom level for the image in your interface right now. So if you grab your zoom tool and zoom in, it will update, or you can change it from here if you want to go 200%. 800%, etc. And then going back down 15.9 to fit it inside at least for the way I have everything set up right now. And then we have our file name and the size of the file, the working file. All right, so that's it for the overview of the GIMP workspace. As you progress through the course, we will go over some additional tips and tricks for getting the most out of your interface and you will begin recognizing where everything is located as you work on the projects in the remainder of the class.